Most foods contain some carbs. Knowing which contain the least will help make your low carb journey very easy. In this video, you will learn the 10 lowest carb foods which will help to keep you full and satisfied rather than feeling starving. Hi Carb Dodgers, my name is Dr. Dan Mags. I'm so glad you've landed on my channel, which is all about achieving lasting weight loss through low carb, real food nutrition. And if you're new here and that sounds good to you, then why not subscribe to my channel so you get notified when I release a new video. It can be a bit of a learning curve to understand what foods to eat on a low carbohydrate diet, particularly if you are aiming for ketosis when you need to keep the carbs really low. The ketogenic diet suggests your daily carb intake should be no more than 20 or 30 grams of net carbs per day. This equates to approximately 5% of your caloric intake from carbs, so very low. So let's have a look at the foods with the lowest amount of carbs. All the foods in this video have less than one gram of carbs per 100 grams, and if you base your meals around these, then you can't go far wrong. So let's get into them. Number one is meat. Meat contains zero carbs. You can choose any type to suit your own preference. Beef, lamb, chicken, turkey, pork, duck. And if you choose fattier cuts of meat, that's gonna help you with your macros as well. Fat will help to keep you full and satisfied. And because of the low fat advice that we've all been given over the last 40 years, you'll often find that the fattier cuts of meat are cheaper than their lean of counterparts. So it's a win-win. Avoid highly processed flavored meats as these can often have added sugars or additives. And if you're not a meat eater, then there are very low carb protein substitutes available, but they tend to be very highly processed, which is something we're not really a fan of here at Carb Dodging. Number two is seafood. Again, this fabulous protein source will keep your carbs at zero. Take your pick from salmon, tuna, mackerel, sardines, and other oily fish types that are rich in omega-3. Cod, place, halibut, other whitefish sources, depending on where you are in the world, are also excellent. Prawns, crab, just about any other seafood you have available. Just be careful to avoid processed products such as crab or seafood sticks, and obviously, breaded versions of these products. And a note that scallops and mussels are slightly higher in their carb content at two to three grams of carb per 100 grams. So just be a little bit mindful of portion sizes when you're eating those. Number three is organ meats or offal. These can be enjoyed on their own or added to other meat-based dishes. They're very nutrient dense food, which will keep the carbs at less than one grams with the exception of liver, which due to some stored glycogen within it may provide up to two grams per 100 grams of carbohydrates. But 100 grams of liver is still quite a lot of this stuff, so you're probably absolutely fine. Number four is eggs. Eggs on their own are zero carbs and can be eaten freely. They are a powerhouse of nutrition. However, some people argue that there is one gram of carbs per large egg, but given the balance of fat and protein, this is not a concern, even if it is true. Just be careful if you start to add in other ingredients when you're cooking, such as milk for scrambled eggs, which will up the carb content a little bit. Number five is fats. Now, the most keto-friendly fats are the unprocessed sorts and can be used for cooking, drizzling over salads and stuff, or for added flavor. And there are no carbs in any of these. Choose from olive oil, extra virgin where possible, coconut oil, ghee, avocado, butter, and you're good to go. Number six is dairy. Now, to be zero carbs or less than one gram of carbs, dairy needs to have no lactose in it. And it's the lactose content that increase the carbs, such as in milk. Now, I've heard this in the comments a lot before can't I just make my latte out of lactose-free milk? And lactose-free products, uh, they're great for those who are lactose intolerant, but aren't necessarily carb-free because lactose-free products just means that the lactose, which is a sugar, has been broken down into more simple sugars. And if you've ever tried lactose-free milk, you'll notice that it's actually sweeter than normal milk. Cheese is a great source of fat and also a great source of protein. Most cheese has zero carbs with the exception of cottage and cream cheese, which has about four grams per 100 grams. Feta cheese, ricotta cheese and goat's cheese 
aren't quite zero carb. They have about two grams per 100 grams. And processed cheeses, such as your squirty cheeses, those cheese slices you get, have between four and six grams per 100 grams. Obviously, if you're going to go for cheeses with those kind of dried fruits added in, you can go way up 12 grams of carbs per 100 grams or more. But cheese can generally be eaten fairly freely. And there are loads that are pretty much carb free. Halloumi, mm, brie, yes. Parmesan, gruyere, mozzarella, cheddar and stilton. Stilton's another favorite of mine. So many great options to choose from. Do let me know in the comments down below. There's a question for you. Let me know in the comments down below which is your favorite cheese. Little bit of a word of warning with cheese. Cheese does have a very high ratio of fat for the quantity. And so it can be really easy to overeat. I certainly know that I can easily eat too much cheese because it can be quite an addictive food for some and eating too much can hinder your weight loss goals if that is what you are aiming for. Next, we come to cream, single, double, heavy, whipping, whatever you want to call it, where you will provide approximately 0.5 grams per tablespoon. So enjoy it, but go easy on the volume. One or two coffees with cream a day is okay, but certainly not six or seven. That might bump your carb content up really quite high. What about Greek yogurt, I hear you ask? Now, well, as much as this is a staple of people who are on low carb diets, it typically provides about five grams per hundred grams. So about six grams for a normal size portion. So if you're on a strict ketogenic diet where you're really keeping those numbers low, it may not be a particularly useful addition, say for breakfast, especially when you start adding berries and things on top. But one tablespoon on top of a protein-based meal will definitely be okay. Number seven is vegetables. Now, depending on where you choose to get your references from, the carb quantities in vegetables varies quite significantly. And I guess this isn't surprising as these are natural products with many different varieties. Growing conditions around the world naturally will lead to different carb counts. So you can argue about this all you want in the comments down below, but generally non-starchy vegetables, particularly your leafy greens, can pretty much be eaten freely. No one ever caused themselves any issue by eating too much spinach. And Popeye absolutely thrived on the stuff. Any small amount of carbohydrate in there is pretty much going to be fiber anyway. If you would like a detailed guide to the carb contents in a wide range of vegetables and indeed lots of different foods in general, not just the ones that are zero carb, then there is a free guide that we've produced that is available on my website. And you can find that guide by clicking the link in the description of this video. Number eight is fruit. Sadly, there are no fruits that are considered truly zero carb. Avocado, despite the high fiber content, will still provide you about two grams per hundred grams. Another option would be olives. If you only eat five of them, then you will stay under one gram of carbohydrates. So yeah, you can absolutely have this on a ketogenic diet. You can have small amounts in a nice big salad. But just remember, too much will push up your carb intake. Number nine is nuts and seeds. Much like what I mentioned with vegetables, there are a lot of variations in the quoted carb contents of nuts and seeds. But you do need to be a little bit mindful about your choices. Almonds, Brazil nuts and walnuts are very close to being zero carb and also have very high fiber contents as do hazelnuts, macadamia nuts, and sesame seeds. Just watch out for, and I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but cashew nuts, pistachio nuts, and peanuts are all surprisingly high in carbohydrates. And despite tasting absolutely lovely, do catch a lot of people out when they're getting started. Number 10 is condiments. You might be surprised that yes, there are still some condiments that you can enjoy with your meals. Not the obviously sugar laden ketchups and sauces, but you can use things like mustard, obviously not the honey version, mayonnaise, but preferably a homemade one or those made without seed oils, um, hollandaise sauce if you're fancy getting in the kitchen, uh, bernaise sauce is one of my favorite of the classical French sauces, absolutely amazing with steak. 
that is a little bit tricky to cook, if I'm honest. Uh, vinegars, lots of people take apple cider vinegar to help with blood sugar control. And yes, vinegars have a positive effect on your insulin sensitivity. So in some respects can be considered a bit of a low carb superfood. And of course you can make vinaigrettes with a bit of olive oil, absolutely fantastic on a salad. But I should warn you about balsamic vinegar, which has two grams of carbs per tablespoon. And I was told once that the dark color actually comes from molasses. And this is why it has the higher carb count. But I only found this out after I'd been eating balsamic vinegar dressing on my salad back in 2016, when I started my own low carb journey. And it didn't stop me losing nearly 70 pounds in just over six months. So there you have it, the 10 lowest carb foods to include in your diet. These will help keep you on track and they will enable you to feel full, satisfied, and have great success with your low carb or ketogenic diet. Like all things with food, the portion size can have a massive effect on your end results. There will be some slightly higher carb foods that you can enjoy, but in smaller quantities. And you need to find the right balance for you and your own goals. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, if you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, then I'd love it if you would subscribe and then you'll get notified whenever I release new videos. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one.